Hi, I'm Anatole, and uh, shortly I will be joined by Min. He's running a little late, so I'm recording the introduction on solo on my own. And this will be our reaction. This is our reaction video to Watchmen, Season 1, Episode 2, titled Martial Feats of Comanche Horsemanship, which scored 8.2 on IMDb. Because our conclusion, our review of episode one was truncated because I had to go to work right after finishing the reaction. And since I am waiting for Min to get here, I, I will talk a little bit about episode one before getting into the reaction video. And the one thing I, I wanted to comment on right off the bat was the music. Min never mentioned it during the episode. So uh, I, I'm not sure if he's familiar with the band Nine Inch Nails, but I, I love that band. I, lo uh, I love Trent Reznor, and he works with someone, I'm hoping the name will come to me while I'm speaking, when he does the soundtracks. And their, their work on Watchmen is just really evocative. It makes the show feel like you are watching a movie, and HBO shows tend to do that because the production values are so high. Of course, their tagline is, it's not TV, it's HBO. But I think even for HBO, there, there were some sequences during the first episode that felt like feature films, especially the scene when Don Johnson's character is chasing the, the uh, 7th Cavalry members in the owl ship. And at that point, the editing and the music and the pace all and the, the production value of that sequence all elevated it towards the realm of feature film. It easily could have been a sequence from a feature film. If you were to show that to someone and ask, where, uh, what, what movie do you think this was in? And they didn't know The Watchmen. And it's a trick question, of course. They, they would start guessing the names of movies. I don't think they would ever pause and say, no, I, that's not a film. That's a TV show, so I, I, I can't answer the question. They wouldn't even go there. They would probably assume since you framed the question is what movie is it from and the, the footage and the, the way that it's presented looks like a feature film i think many people would just assume that came directly from a movie uh, and and so the other thing i want to comment upon is the acting so Re regina king i thought was uh, amazing in the lead role because you can see all these nuances and levels to her character uh, we got to see her respond m many different ways during the episode uh, that's the mark of writing for a, an actor or for a character when they can show many different emotions and then of course the actor being to be able to pull it off and then Don Johnson I, I personally thought was the best part of the episode I always liked him in Miami Vice I never I never pegged him as a method actor uh, he was very theatrical and charismatic so when he played Sonny is it Sonny Crockett was it, I think it was Sonny Crockett was the, the character that played Miami Vice. It was great. He, he fit in the flashy tone of the TV show. And there were moments where he would play tragedy, and it was, it was good enough. But I think you would never mistake him for Marlon Brando. But in that, that episode, the way the character was written so uh, charismatically and, and given moments of gravitas, I think Don Johnson pulled off every, every note, uh, every different emotional tone that he, he was asked to. And then finally, the, the last actor I want to mention is Louis Gossett Jr. It was really great seeing him, seeing him in that episode and because I, I have fond memories of some of the films that he had, he had appeared in in the late 1980s. So I think that was brilliant casting to put him into that role. And so those will be my, that, that concludes my sort of introductory thoughts on this episode and final thoughts on episode one. And so join me after the intro, and hopefully Min will be here, and, it, and we will do our reaction to Watchmen Season 1, Episode 2, Martial Arts of Comanche, Comanche Horsemanship. This is harder than it looks, by the way. <laughs> so please forgive me the little pauses as I try to remember the words as I speak, and pauses as I try to carefully enunciate what I'm saying. It ain't easy. All right, see you in a bit.
Hi everyone, uh, some bad news. Min had a personal emergency, so it's just going to be me. <clears throat> but hopefully Min will join us next for the next episode. Unfortunately, when this happens, uh, the, the method we have of me watching the episode and Min doing a pure reaction uh, presents the problem when Min's not here, my reaction's not pure because I've seen the episode before. So if that bothers you, I understand. If you want to skip the episode, I hope you'll join me. Uh, I will do my best to still be entertaining, and and I, I think it won't be that much of an impediment to your pleasure. So please do stick around as I give my reaction, third reaction to Watchmen Season 1, Episode 2. I really like the opening for Episode 2, the way they incorporate the titles with a prop from the show that's really cool. Where is Fräulein Müller? Here I am, sir. That's not a good German accent. I'll stop. I'll see myself out. Commandant, I certainly do. Oh, it's possible she lived in America for a time. Around the turn of the century, there were a lot of Irish and German immigrants who came to America, worked, and then went back to their mother country. And it was a, the borders were a little more fluid than they are now. And you had much more, it was easier to be an economic migrant than it is today. I love boys. So this letter she's writing apparently is true. It was something that they dropped in on the African American soldiers during World War One. Inverse reflection. What is that painting on the wall? I haven't seen anybody in any of those uh, Easter egg explanations on YouTube talk about that painting. I'm sure it's significant though. To carry the gun is service of America is not, not an honor, honor but a shame. shame. Hmm. So I wonder if the father kept the letter but didn't ever act on it, but the son, after being orphaned, looking for someone to take care of him, did take up that offer. Because remember, at the opening of episode one, we saw that him and there was a, a sister, I'm guessing, he was cradling that sister walking down the road. So he would have been looking for anyone to help him. Right now I'm in the middle of rereading the comic book for the umpteenth time and after I, I'm on issue five right now, just finished issue five. And once I do that I'm going to rewatch the movie, it'll be the second time I've watched it. I don't remember if that's new to the show or something that they used in the title sequence of the film. I'm curious to see. In the history of the world, mugs that say world's greatest mom and world's greatest dad, I wonder how many have cumulatively been sold. Are we in the billions? Some bakery. <laughs> Look at the way she looks at the cup. That's telling. That's a tell that that cup is important. You didn't kill him. I did all by myself. That nose. That's a tell someone's lying. Although you could be telling the truth. It's really hard to tell with this character. They can uh, make copies of himself and be in two places the same. Yeah, I think this is <clears throat> a foreshadowing that maybe Dr. Manhattan will pose as someone at some point. Probably at the very end. I think they're seeding this now so that it'll be a twist. Like in episode 9, 8, 9 where we're not expecting him to be a character, then that character saves the day. What are these for? And that's his tell, but that's important. Yeah, another thing that's pointed out is that there may not be an internet in this world, which is quite interesting, <clears throat> because they're using pagers and not cell phones. I imagine the fact there is no internet will tie into the plot in some way because there is no instant communication through texting that that'll affect how the story unfolds, I'm guessing. So obviously she's an intellectual because she's wearing a beret and glasses. Something I want to point out is that the word paparazzi comes from Italian and its original meaning was mosquito. 
So it's a bit ironic that in this future, paparazzi literally turned into mosquitoes. Scare. Stand down. You in charge now? No. As I wanted to look up was who, who takes charge after a chief of police is killed? We need to get him down. Who's the next person in line? I meant to look that up and didn't. <laughs> Maybe. Mm -hmm. Check, check. I'm opening up that present. In exact. Yeah, midnight. It's always significant in Watchmen. Oh. Big hand. <laughs> I have a feeling she's not really talking about hands. Is the husband hit? Where's the husband? He must be, the husband must be the one who takes out the criminal here. Unless there's something there that they're not telling us. And it's not the husband, but someone else. Promise to keep an eye on it. You are doing a good job, Don Johnson. Keep it up. Now what? We're rolling the Nixonville. Boss cavalry head until someone talks. So this, speaking of false flags, this feels a little bit like a setup to get exactly this reaction. You're gonna walk out of your shitty trailers and into one of these lovely petty wagons. So then what's uh, the 14th Amendment, the, or Fourth Amendment, the right to <clears throat> protection against illegal search and seizure? So we're definitely in a sort of martial, martial law, uh, martial law rule, it seems like. Come on, man, we don't need to do this. Yeah, I have a feeling exactly, this is exactly what they want. They. I remember Louis Gossett Jr. Will said that there's a vast conspiracy at work. And I, I think this is their aim, to stir up unrest between rival political factions. And the death of the chief was one, was one way to do that. So that Dreamland Theater that's right there that's in the picture, the sign is in the museum as she comes in. The right there behind her, that's the dream, Dreamland sign, theater sign. Five three nine one seven six two four. Still weird not seeing movie and TV shows use the 555 number that they used for so long. Can you take a rain check? I can take a real check. Well, there you go. Why don't you show your true, true motive there, loving grandfather. That's yeah, really good, really good acting. It was a policeman. The pause, the processing, and then see him kind of blinking Someone his eyes, me. doesn't know what to do with it, that information. Ralph Muller, circus strongman. Except that's not me. I just need people to think it is so they'll stop looking. There's more than one person faking their death in this program. Ozymandias and Milt Mueller, and then there's the Speculation that Don Johnson's death is faked. And then to have a famous painting like that, where did the chief police get his money? Nothing like a nice tomato straight off the tree. Eight minutes to midnight. Eight minutes to midnight, this is episode two out of nine. So the math checks out. Dude, where's my car? Oh, I love how they go into a Beastie Boys song here. But I thought the Beastie Boys would, would never sell their music for commercials or film. All right, so let me give you my review of Watchmen in one second. So join me and I will tell you what I thought about this episode. Join me in a, in a bit. And I'm back now for my review. The only thing I want to add at the end here is that I am a little concerned about the direction that the story is taking because I can see some elements from the original graphic novel being repeated. Principally, the, the death of the comedian is replicated here by the death of the police chief of police, played by Don Johnson. And both characters were anti-heroes, and both characters were... Their, their identity was uncovered after... Another character went searching in their apartments or houses and found their costume in a secret partition. So Rorschach found the comedian's costume, and here Regina King found Don Johnson's costume. It's probably gonna be, what's that character's name? I, I, I'm not getting it here. But, so uh, in a behind the scenes documentary, Regina King said that this show is a, is a, is a remix. 
and I'm, I'm not a fan at all of these soft, soft remakes. I, I say soft remake because it's not a reboot, it's still in continuity, but all they do is remake the original. I'm thinking of the Star Wars films that, that were made, the, the, the first one that was made about four years ago. I, I'm, I just feel like I'm, I'm okay with a reboot if you explicitly say you're just remaking it, like what was done with the Star Trek films when they just did a reboot, when it was actually in an alternate universe. But I, it, you, you, you need to commit as the creative or the, the showrunner or the scriptwriter and either do a remake or a reboot or just continue in continuity. I don't like the way they're, I, I don't like someone that tries to blur, blur the difference because I feel like you're just getting the weaknesses of the material, all the weaknesses, none of the strengths. When, when you stay in continuity, but then do a retelling of the original story. And I, I'm worried that that's how this is going to play out. So we're going to have an attack at the end that's meant to be the impetus for bringing society together, like we see with the division between the 7th Cavalry and the more, mm, what would for now is the mainstream, but in the series is the mainstream, but it, would be called liberal policies. And the same was in the graphic novel when Ozymandias was the one who faked the attack in order to bring about world peace by uniting everyone against this unseen common enemy. And then the, re the revelation of the secret passed to a, a character early in the series. We had Rorschach and in here it was Judd Crawford. So I, I, I'm worried about the direction of this series. I, I hope my worries are unfounded, but it sh sure doesn't feel good. And so I, I don't care for this episode as much as I did for episode one. And hopefully my fears will be allayed in the next episode. So we'll, we'll just have to see. And I hope you'll join me for my reaction to that. Hopefully Min will be, there, be here with me for, for that episode as well. And so until next time, Take care and be well. Goodbye.